Amen. Amen. Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Come on, let's give our Lord and Savior a hand clap of praise today. Hallelujah. Even those that are at home, come on, I want you to worship him. We've been in, in the cyber sanctuary. We're going to give God praise today. You know why? God has brought us to a brand new month. How many are thankful that God has brought us to the month of November? Come on, let's thank God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I believe, I believe. I believe with every, every fiber of my being that the best is yet to come. Here it is at your house. Come on, somebody say, I received that. Let's give God a hand clap of praise for that. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, listen, listen, I am excited. I am just so excited. God has just been so good, you know, in, in spite of it all. In spite of it all, God has been so good. And sometimes you got to learn to just give God an anyhow praise, just a just the in spite of it all kind of praise. Amen? Amen. We want to welcome those that are watching online in our cyber sanctuary. Welcome, welcome. Wherever you may be, wherever you may be watching, we welcome you today. Today is Communion Sunday, so while we're doing all of the announcements and logistics, we want you to get your communion elements prepared. Run to the refrigerator, get what you got, bring it in. We, we're going to have communion today. Uh, but before we do that, we're going to go ahead and get our other logistics out of the way. I want to make a few more announcements. Remember, we will have our first service here, our first open door service here on November the 28th. So we want to make sure that you're prepared for that. Get here, get here early, get here on time, and get here ready to worship God. We got a lot of dedications we're going to do on that day, and I'm just excited. I'm just, how many excited about what God is getting ready to do? What God has already done. And so for those of you that are watching at home, I look forward to seeing you soon. I look forward to worshiping with you soon. Having said that, listen, we need uh, all of our ministries to now be filled. We need to stand all of our ministries up again. So if you're ready to serve in the house of God, we want you to stop by the church. You can stop by any time during the week. You can shoot an email. Let us know that you want to sign up for these ministries. We want to go ahead and get those active now so we can be prepared for the people when they come. So listen, we want everybody to put their hand to the plow and, 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 and pray about it and ask God what he would have you to do. Amen. We need you in our media ministry and our helps ministry. We need you in our children's ministry. We need you to work in the house of God. And so we're just so excited about that. Well, listen, let's go ahead and get our offering out of the way so we can go ahead and get, get to communion and then get right to the Word. So we're going to give our giver's confession. Let's give our giver's confession, and then we're going to have our communion. We're going to go right into the Word. Our giver's confession, we're going to bring that on the screen. Let's read it together. Ready? Read. Now may he who supplies seed to the sower. Come on, let's bless that offering right now. Father God, we thank you right now that you've blessed us. You are the one, Father, that gives seed to the sower. We can take no credit. Everything that we have, all good and perfect gifts, has come from you. It is a privilege for us to be able to sow back into a God that has sown so much into us. You didn't have to do it, but you did. And so we thank you. And I'm asking, Father, now that you would bless the hands of the giver. Bless them, Lord God, that the seed that they may sow, bring it back into their lives a hundredfold. We know you can and believe that you will. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Listen, we want you to get your communion elements together. Those of you that are worshiping at home in our cyber sanctuary, listen, we want you to get in a quiet place, in a sacred place, and let's, let, let's have communion together. We want you to get it together right now. We, we're going to bless it before we partake of it. So we want you to now just stretch your hands towards it, put your hand on it, and let's bless it together. Father God, we ask now that you would bless these communion elements that we're using today. They represent your body and your blood that was shed for us, and we ask that you would Bless them as we use them today to signify that blessed moment. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. On that day that we know as the Last Supper, the Lord's Supper, Jesus sat with his disciples and he took bread and after he had given thanks, he broke it, he gave it. He said, take, eat, this is my body that shall be broken for you. 
and they took and they ate together. Like manner after supper, he took the cup. He said, this cup represents the new covenant of my blood that shall be shed for you. As often as you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you do show remembrance of me until I come again. And they took and they drank together. Let us go before the Lord in prayer. Before we go into the word, let us pray together. Father God, we come before you today and we are such a thankful people because you've been so good to us. Father, you've opened doors for us this year. You closed some doors for us this year. And Father, although everything hadn't been perfect, you still have been a perfect God. Father God, we, we understand that we're standing here today not by our own power, not by our own might, but because of your hand of grace and mercy that's been on our lives. That's why we're here. And so, Father God, when we partake of the Lord's Supper today, we remember the blood that was shed for us. And our lives today is proof that the blood still works. You've kept us, Lord. You've kept our children and you've kept our families. Lord God, you've kept a roof over our head and clothes over our back. And today, Father, we thank you. We thank you for those things that we often take for granted. We realize this morning, but all we need to do is go downtown and we see those living on the street, but you've given us a roof. There are people, Lord God, that don't have clothing to put on, but you've given us a closet that's full of clothes. And, and Father, we, we, we realize that we may not have much, but we thank you for the bit that we have that you've shown us. You've given us what we need to pay our bills and to be able to feed our family. And for that, Father, we just want to say thank you. You're such an awesome God. And we thank you today because you are God that's true to your word. If you said it, you are God enough to perform it. And so, Father, right now, we don't just pray for our household. We don't just pray for our family. But we pray for our neighbor, Lord God. We pray for our brother and sisters. Those that we know may be going through. Those that we know may be dealing with sicknesses or issues with their family. Those that we know may be dealing with issues with their children. We pray for them right now. We touch and agree with them right now. Oh, Father, we are standing with them. Your word says, well, two or three are touching and agreeing. There you will be in the midst. So we let our brother and our sister know that they're not standing by themselves today, that we're going to keep standing with them, praying with them until they're healed, until they're delivered, until they're set free. And so, Father, right now, the same grace that you showed over our house, show it over our neighbor's house. The same deliverance that you showed over our house, show it over our neighbor house. The same financial blessing that you bestowed over our house, we're not selfish today. Do the same thing in our neighbor's house. We know you can, and we're standing on belief that you will. And it's in the name of Jesus that we do pray. Everybody said amen, amen, and amen. Come on, let's give God a hand clap of praise today. Hallelujah. It will never, never lose its power. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. I feel that thing this morning. Can we just, can we just give God a hand clap of praise? Come on, let's just, let's just praise him like we know the blood still works. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes. Yes, yes, amen. Well, listen, let's get, let's get into the Word. Let's get into the Word today. If you have your Bibles, your iPhones, your iPads, I ask that you would turn with me to the book of Joshua, Joshua chapter 5. Joshua chapter 5 houses and holds our Word for today, Joshua chapter 5, and we're going to begin at verse 1. Joshua chapter 5, beginning at verse 1. You have it signified by saying, I got it. Word of the Lord reads, So it was when all the kings of the Amorites who were on the west side of the Jordan and all the kings of the Canaanites who were by the sea heard that the Lord had dried up the waters of the Jordan from before the children of Israel until we had crossed over, that their heart melted and there was no spirit in them any longer because of the children of Israel. 
At that time, the Lord said to Joshua, make flint knives for yourself and circumcise the sons of Israel again the second time. So Joshua made flint knives for himself and circumcised the sons of Israel at the heel of the foreskins. And this is the reason why Joshua circumcised them. All the people who came out of Egypt, who were males, all the men of war, had died in the wilderness on the way after they had come out of Egypt. For all the people who came out had been circumcised, but all the people born in the wilderness on the way as they came out of Egypt had not been circumcised. For the children of Israel walked 40 years in the wilderness, till all the people who were men of war, who came out of Egypt, were consumed because they did not obey the voice of the Lord, to whom the Lord swore that he would not show them the land which the Lord had sworn to their fathers that he would give us, a land flowing with milk and honey. Then Joshua circumcised their sons, whom he raised up in their place, for they were uncircumcised because they had not been circumcised on the way. So it was, when they had finished circumcising all the people, that they stayed in their places in the camp till they were healed. Can you say amen? Today, saints of God, we're going to start a new series on today, a series titled The Recovery Room the recovery room. Saints of God, I need you to hear me. Recovering is critically important because you can't do this thing called life right if you recover wrong. And if you heeded anything from our last sermon series to break uh, soul ties, then it could be that there may be some voids in your life. There may be some wounds left in your life, some wounds or some voids that need to be healed. And the only way they can be healed properly is if you heal them in the recovery room. Let's pray together. Father God, we thank you today for your word. We thank you for showing us another month, for bringing us into this new dispensation of time. Father, we ask today, that you would bless your word, bless the hearers and the doers of your word. Father, let your hand be heavy on this word today. Give me the strength I need to declare it, to preach it, to speak it, to teach it to your people. Holy Spirit, just as you gave it to me. And Father God, I ask now that this word will change us. It will give us the courage that we need, the healing that we need to move forward in this day. It's in the mighty and unmatched name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ we ask these prayers. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Somebody say the recovery room. Now, I want you to know from the outset that I plan on taking my time in this particular series. I'm going to take my time because it's important to me that, that you understand not just the concepts of the Bible, but it's important to me, saints of God, that you begin to understand and walk in the precepts of the Bible. David said, Lord, teach me your precepts. In other words, I don't want to just move in what I heard about you. I want to know what you meant. And God's precepts is what God meant in his word before it went through somebody's head. And it's, it's, it's very important to me that when I stand before you and I teach God's Word, hear me, that I'm teaching you God's original intent and not the 21st century pop culture watered down version. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I believe that God is trying to do in the body of Christ what He did in the body of Christ. Jesus Christ was all man and all God at the same time. And I believe that his life is an example to teach us that it is possible to live in the world but not live according to the world. 
that it is possible for us to exist in this skin and still walk in His Spirit. This is why He teaches us in the Word of God that we are to walk by faith and not by sight. Faith is seeing something in your mind, here it is, before you see it with your eyes. So, if we call ourselves Christians, and we do, then we ought not walk by what we see, but we ought walk by what He said. We ought to walk by what it is that He spoke. So whenever you move in life, whenever you move in life, you ought not move based on what CNN said, Fox News said. You ought to move by what God spoke. Let, let, me, let me give you text here. Hebrews 11 and 3 puts it this way. It says, by faith we understand that the worlds were framed, w w watch this, by the Word of God, so that the things which were made were not made of things that were visible. We understand that, that everything that you see, God, it was made by the spoken Word of God. And so we as Christians, that's how we should move. We should move by what God spoke and not by what we see. In Exodus chapter 25, God called Moses up to the mountain and he spoke to Moses and he showed Moses a picture of the tabernacle. And then he said to Moses in no uncertain terms, now go down and build what you saw. I told you, you, you got to remember that the mind does two things primarily. The mind remembers and it imagines. Say it with me, remembers and imagine. Your mind is programmed in such a way that if you don't give it something great to imagine, it will automatically go back to memory. If you don't have a vision for your future, your mind will automatically take you back to the past. You, you are built, you are so hardwired that if you don't give your mind and imagination to move forward to, your memory will pull you back. <laughs> I'm talking to somebody right here. And that's why the Bible says, forgetting those things that are behind, reaching for those things that are ahead. We press for, toward the mark of the high call of God in Christ Jesus. Forgetting doesn't mean that it never comes to your mind. It don't mean that you don't think about it. Forgetting means that when it comes to your mind, you willfully overlook it. You don't meditate on it. You don't go to bed thinking about it. You don't get up thinking about it. You willfully overlook it. Your mind, hear me, saints of God, is the factory for change. It all, it all starts in your mind, and your imagination is the fuel that pushes your pursuit of that change. If you don't see it, you won't pursue it. And that is why the enemy is flooding your mind with memories. Come here, let me talk to you. The enemy is flooding your mind with memories so that you will never imagine. Are y'all with me this morning? See, 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 here, here it is, here it is. He, he floods your mind with memories because God moves when you begin to imagine. But if your mind is filled with what had happened, I can't get no help in here, and all you think about is the memories. See, I, I'm, I'm, I'm terrible with remembering stuff. I'm, I'm absolutely, I, I'm, I'm terrible. I, I, my wife, Made an appointment for me last week. I said, look, baby, you got to write this down. You got to text it to me, email it to me, fax it to me. You got to give me all that because I'm terrible with remembering stuff. And because I realize something about myself. I realize that I cannot remember and imagine at the same time. I'm going somewhere. And so whenever I have an appointment, I have to tell Rebecca, listen, write this down. If you don't tell me about this schedule, if you don't tell me that I'm supposed to meet this person or talk to that person, I won't remember. I, I won't remember. You got to write it down and you have to text me. Here it is the day of to remind me. Because I have released her to do that for my memory, now it leaves me free to imagine. 
I can see y'all not hearing what I'm saying. See, most visionaries don't have a good memory. Come, come, come here, let me talk to you on this side. Most visionaries don't have a good memory. They got to write it down. Why? Because they're so futuristic in their thinking. They're thinking about something that's three or four or five years ahead. But when you see it, they've already seen it because they're thinking down the road. This is how God wants you to be. He don't want you thinking about where you are. He wants you thinking about where it is he's taking you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But some of us, our mind is so filled with memories that we can't see ourselves nowhere other than than where we are right now. Some of you, your mind is so full of what happened that you can't see where it is you're going. And I've come to tell you that it's time to detox yourself of all of those bad memories. At some point, come here, let me talk to you. At some point, you're going to have to let it go. Let me take my time and talk to you today. At some point, you're going to have to let it go. Yeah, it happened, but that's not where you are. At some point, you're going to have to let it go. You're going to have to let it go. You're going to have to move on. At some point, you're going to have to understand that the job is gone and let it go. Somebody shout, let it go. At some point, you're going to have to let it go. At some point, you're going to have to understand that they left, that they walked out. The relationship is over. It's time out for you sitting there trying to recoup something that's gone. Somebody shout, let it go. At some point, you're going to have to realize, come here, let me talk to you. At some point, you have to understand the business has closed down. You're going to have to let it go. At some point, as hard as it is, at some point, you're going to have to come to the realization that God, God called your loved one home. You got to let it go and you have to imagine because as long as you're stuck in memory, you can't imagine your life being anywhere else. I need about 23 folks to shout, imagine again. Here it is. So watch this. So your faith is your ability to see it before it happens. I'm going to take my time. I ain't going to let y'all push me. Your faith is your ability to see it before it happens. The Bible tells us in Mark chapter 5, around verse 25, the Bible says, Pastor Noah, that there was a woman. <laughs> there was a woman. There was a woman that had an issue with her blood. She had a flow of blood, and she went around all of these doctors, but nobody could help her. The Bible says that she spent all of her earnings, all of her money, going to these doctors, trying to get them to fix her issue with her blood. But the Bible says in Mark chapter 5, around verse 25, it says that one day, here, watch the text, that one day she heard about Jesus. Let me pause for a moment. She heard about him. Does not say she went to the seminary. Does not say she went to anybody's Bible college. Does not say she was a deacon or deaconess. Does not say her pastor told her. It said she heard about Jesus. Watch the text. She heard about Jesus. Watch this. And then it says she said. Okay, okay, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm going. Somebody say take your time. The Bible says she heard about Jesus. When she heard about G Jesus, Deacon Charlie, something on the inside of her moved. When she heard about Jesus, faith moved on the inside of her. Because, here, here, here it is, faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. So she heard about Jesus, it ignited her faith, so she said. <laughs> Woo. She heard about him. Her faith was ignited. She said, watch this, if I, I'm going to take my time because I'm trying to help somebody. She heard a word. Her faith was ignited. Then she said, if I, not if the preacher, not if my mother, not if the deacon, not if my father, not if my sister or my brother, but it's me, but it's me, but it's me, oh Lord. She heard about him and she said, if I, if I can just touch the hem of his garment. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I have lost a lot of blood, but if I, <laughs> I've lost a whole lot of money, 
But if I, I'm a woman and women are not looked at favorably in this culture, but I'm not going to use that as an excuse. If I, and I need some if I folk this morning to just give God an if I shout, because I've come to tell you that if you will, he can. It is. Watch, watch this. Watch this. Here it is. So I need you to catch this because faith gives God permission to show you favor. <laughs> you don't need much faith for grace. Grace is unmerited favor. God gives you grace because that's what God wants to do. But faith gives God permission to show you favor. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Let, 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 me, let, me, let, let me take my time. So, 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 so here it is. Faith gives God permission to show me favor. Favor is when stuff comes to me. I don't have to do anything. It comes to me. Y'all got to stay, stay with me. I'm trying to teach this morning. So, 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 so my faith gives me favor. Stuff coming to me, folk don't like it. They mad at it, but I, I, they got to build a bridge and get over it because this is just God. I didn't do anything to deserve it. God's favor. Faith also gives me the initiative to pursue. So in favor, it comes to me. When I pursue it, I go get it. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? But it all stems from faith because you won't pursue what you don't have faith to believe is there. So walk with me. So when I have faith and if I pursue it and don't get it, I don't worry about it. I just keep my faith because eventually God going to let my favor kick in. Are y'all following what I'm trying to say? See, 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 this is how you recover. This is how you recover. Watch, watch, watch this because when you have faith, it's a trifecta. You don't lose. There's no need for you to be afraid because you don't lose. Either you're going to pursue it or God is going to give you favor and you're going to get it anyway. I wish I had somebody in here. So watch this, watch this. So Robin Sharma puts it this way. Robin Sharma says, all change is hard at first because it's messy in the middle and gorgeous at the end. <laughs> come here, come here. He said, all change is hard at first because it's messy in the middle and gorgeous at the end. Everything, come here, everything is messy in the middle. Everything, everything. When, when you start, if you would have come to this church in the middle of construction, you would have seen dirt, roaches, nails, soda cans, ceiling tiles on the floor. It was messy in the and, and, and come here, come here, because some of the members came by. I saw you, I saw. Some of the members came by in the middle of construction and they were looking like, Pastor, then miss God. I don't know about this building. This is, no, no, but, but, but it was in the middle because everything is messy in the middle. If you come to my house in the middle of me preparing dinner for my family, if you step in there in the middle of meal prep, you will say, I don't know what first lady I'm going to eat today because this, he got flour everywhere. He got onions over here, bell peppers over there, paprika over here. He need to call Hello Fresh. He need to call Uber Eats. Come on, somebody. He need to call somebody because you've come in the middle. But oh, let me tell you, you can't really appreciate a thing until you get to the end. Is there anybody in here? that can understand. Let me give you an encouraging word. He who has begun a good work in you shall complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. 
Uh, I'm talking to somebody right now because somebody is kind of messy in the middle and you don't know how things gonna turn out because it's a little messy right now. Your money is a little funny. Your marriage is a little rocky. But I've come to tell you, you're just in the middle. Let me talk to my old school saints for a minute. Here it is. Please be patient with me. <laughs> God is not through with me yet. But when God gets through with me, I shall come forth. Can we give God a shout of praise? Because we're not finished yet. I need you to tell somebody, he's not finished with me yet. I know I look bad, but don't get too used to me being right here because this just in the middle, honey. God got something good for me. And I've come to tell you right now, you're in the middle of your blessing. You're in the middle of your turnaround. You're in the middle of your deliverance. Somebody shout, I'm just in the middle. So here it is. Here it is. Watch this. I'm almost where I'm going. Here it is. Here it is in the text. So in our text, God tells Joshua, I'm almost done. He tells Joshua, he says, I want you to circumcise the sons of Israel, watch the text, again a second time. And let, let, me, let me teach a little bit right here because now you must remember, you must remember now that the Bible, the Old Testament was written in Hebrew. So when you hear this text here, you must understand that in the original Hebraic text, uh, that, that, that it was written in poetry and prose. Yeah. So all of the Old Testament Hebraic text was written with a poetry context to it. Yeah. It, it was written with something called parallelism. Yeah. P parallelism is successive verb construct. So they, okay, so okay, okay let, let me just make it plain. So, so if they say it twice, it sounds twice, but it ain't really two times. They didn't circumcise them twice. He explains to us in the text exactly what happened. He said, circumcise the sons of Israel again the second time, and he explains why he says that, because the first time the fathers were circumcised in the wilderness, right? But because the fathers were disobedient, God vowed that they would not see the promised land. And so these were the sons of the fathers that died in the wilderness. And their fathers had not even circumcised them. So they were the ones that God told Joshua to circumcise. He told them to circumcise them. They were reminded of what Moses told them. Here it is. Moses told them, now, when you get to that side of the Jordan, you can't act like you did on this side in the wilderness. I'm talking to somebody right here. You got to be circumcised because there's a stricter discipline on that side than it was on this side. Come here, come here. Let me talk to you. You can't act on Phillips Drive like you did on Frontage Road. Come here, I'm trying to talk to somebody. You, you, you can't act in this season like you did on that season. There has to be a circumcision going on. Uh, are y'all hearing what I'm saying? And so watch this. Now, this ultimately, this ultimately, let, let, let me teach you. I'm, I'm getting back to the recovery for a minute, but I need to teach you here. This ultimately points back to Jesus Christ, who is the author of a new circumcision that is not a circumcision of the flesh, but a circumcision of the heart. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You still got to be cut, but it's not a physical cut. It's a spiritual cut of the heart. Let me give you text to back up my thesis. Romans 2 and 28. Romans 2, 28 says, For he is not a Jew who is one outwardly, nor is circumcision that which is outward in the flesh. But he is a Jew who is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart, in the spirit, not in the letter, whose praise is not from men, but from God. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Let's go to Colossians 2 and 11 to further undergird what I'm teaching you. It says, in him you were also circumcised with circumcision made without hands by putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. So, so, so here it is. What he's saying is that there's going, 
There has to be, whenever God is taking you to a new level, whenever God is taking you to a new place, when he's taking you to a new dimension, this has nothing to do with age. This has nothing to do with pedigree. It has nothing to do with ethnicity. It has to do with when God calls you. Whenever God calls you and he's taking you to, whenever he's upgrading you in any way, he has to cut you. There has to be a cutting. There has to be a circumcision. You're not ready for the new until you've been circumcised of the old. He, he, has to, he has to circumcise. So, he, so, so watch this. I, I got to get to where I'm going here. Here it is. So he tells Joshua, listen. He says, now, I want you to circumcise the sons of Israel again a second time. This is the point I want to get to before we get to the recovery. Pastor Liggins, it must have been difficult for Joshua, the leader, to incapacitate his entire army in the middle of a battle. <laughs> I, I, I want you to see just how, 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 how important circumcision was to God. It must have been difficult for Joshua in the middle of battle, in a hostile environment, to now incapacitate his entire army because when he cut them, they can't move. What do you do as a leader when God says, before you go any further, I need you to cut. <laughs> there has to be a circumcision of some hearts. In the middle of transition. What do you do that in the middle of your movement, God steps in and says, shut everything down and do some cutting? <laughs> I, come, come here. I need to talk to you because some, some, some of you, I need, to, I, I, I need to, to, to really talk to you because when we have gone through and we're coming out of this whole pandemic, I need you to understand that, listen, if you survived it, you survived it on purpose. There's some circumcision that's going on. There's no need to be afraid of the future. God had to do some cutting. He had to do some cutting. He had to do some cutting. And you can't go back to what was, what God has done some cutting. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So watch this. Here it is. I need you to catch this. Because although circumcision today is not one of the flesh, I need you to understand that there still is a recovery period. <laughs> God help me to preach it right. Although your flesh wasn't cut, your heart was, you still need to recover. And I need you to understand that recovery, your recovery period, hear me saints of God, recovery is a season. You don't recover quickly. It takes some time to recover. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because you feel ready before you are ready. It takes some time to recover because the flesh heals faster than the heart does. And the reason some of you are going through the bleeding that you're going through inside is because you moved before your heart was healed. Oh, I, I don't know who I'm talking to, in here, but I need to talk to somebody that's listening to me. God has done some cutting. He removed some things, and you got to sit still. You got to tabernacle with him. You got to draw closer to him. You got to be in your word more than ever before. You have to seek his face more than ever before. You have to stay there until you recover. There is a difference between recovering and healing. Recover means to get back. Heal.
heal means to get better. And some of you moved and you ain't better. And God says, I'm not going to let you move. Come here, come here, come here. I'm not going to let you move. You have to stay right here in this place until you are healed. You can't move. You're not ready for the next relationship until you heal. You're not ready for the next promotion until you heal. You're not ready to go to this level until you heal. I know you feel better, but if you were to check your heart, Here it is. I'm done. I want to show you this. In Joshua 5 and 9, God did not change the name of the place they were in until they were healed. God, help me to preach. The Lord said to Joshua, stay here until they heal. The place that they were in was called Gilgal. God said, after they had healed, God said, this day I have rolled away the reproach of Israel. The reproach meant the disappointment. Come here. I'm talking about them, but I'm talking about you. God said, this day I have rolled away the disappointment. The place was called Gilgal. Before they were healed, Gilgal meant circle. So no matter how they tried, no matter what they did, circle. They were on the treadmill of life. They were on the 285 of life. Come here, let me talk to you. But once they were healed, God changed the name of Gilgal from circle to rolling. <laughs> I'm going to shout by myself. And some of you, the reason you're still in a circle, <laughs> some of you, the reason you ain't moving yet is because God is not going to let you move until you heal. And I don't know who I'm talking to today, but there's some healing that needs to take place. Because once you imagine yourself better, once you imagine yourself healed, once you imagine yourself whole, is there anybody in here that can testify, God cut some stuff from me, but I can lift my hands today because I know I'm healed. Are there any healed saints in the house today? Give God 10 minutes of shouting right now to let him know, Father, thank you for healing me. Here it is. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I, I, I have some more next week. Watch this. We have got to recover so that we can move. We have to recover holistically so that God can move us. Your imagination, once you are healed, you can imagine again. If all you can think about, come here, let me talk to you. If all you can think about is the past, you haven't healed yet. If all you can think about is the memory of what broke your heart, if all you can think about is the memory of what almost killed you, if all you can think about is the memory of what they did to you when you was five years old and what they said about you, if that's all you can think about, you hadn't healed yet, so you're still in the circle. But once you heal, once you imagine you again, once you see yourself again, whole, oh, I want you to start seeing yourself healed and blessed. I want you to start imagining seeing yourself debt free. I want you to start seeing your marriage whole. Stop remembering when it was broken and see it whole. I want you to start seeing your child turned around. Stop remembering what they used to be and start telling them what they shall be. Are y'all hearing me today? I need you to start seeing yourself whole. 
And I want to talk to some folk. And I'm done. Because we're getting ready to come back and worship God. The Bible says, forsake not the assembly of yourself together. And God has protected you. And we're going to do the proper precautions. But I want you to understand that there are certain blessings that are commanded when we're together. Yeah, you can worship at home, and you can watch virtually online. You can do that all day. But there's nothing like being around the brethren and worshiping God. And you have to start seeing yourself healed and imagine yourself whole and stop seeing yourself sick. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Stop seeing yourself broke. Stop seeing yourself sick. Stop seeing yourself divorced. Stop seeing yourself unemployed. And you have to imagine again. And I want you to say it with me right now. I'm done. I want you to say it with me now. Say, say I'm healed. I'm whole. And I'm free. I want you to put it in the chat if you're at home. Chat in. I'm healed. I'm whole. I'm free. You have to say it. You have to say it for yourself. I want you to stand to your feet. And this time I want you to say it so every devil in hell can hear you. I don't care what you got going on in your body. I don't care what you got going on at your house. I don't care what you have going on in your finances. When you say it this time, I want you to let every demon know they don't have authority over you. I want you to shout, I'm healed. I'm whole. I'm free. Now give God a shout of praise for your healing right there. Hallelujah. I'm done. And I want you to know, I want you to know that God has a designated place for you to be healed. And it's called the recovery room. <laughs> I want you to lift your hands all over the building. I want you to receive this word and receive this blessing. Father God, I thank you right now for every hearer, every doer of your word. Father, I ask right now, Holy Spirit, we give you permission to seek out every wounded place, every wounded place in our body, every wounded place in our mind. Holy Spirit, we know that where you dwell, sickness cannot dwell. Holy Spirit, we know that where you dwell, fear cannot dwell. Holy Spirit, we know that where you dwell, lack cannot dwell. Holy Spirit, we give you permission now to dwell in our physical home and to dwell in this temple called our body. We decree and declare we are healed and we are whole and we are free. And so, Father, right now, I bless your people. I ask right now that you would bless them. Lord, we ask that you would keep them, that you would let your face shine upon them. We ask now, Father God, that you would establish them, that they will realize that they are free, and they are free in you, and who the Son has set free, that they are free indeed. And so we bless you now for our deliverance, in Jesus' name, for our healing. Amen, amen. And amen. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you is our prayer. We'll see you next week. God bless you. God bless you.